All right, to kick up the conversation on Tech Tuesday, we start with our first guest. Her mm -hmm. name is Olamide Aja. To the show. Okay. Thank you for having me. Our Tuesdays are like Tech Tuesday, so we discuss everything techy. And yeah. um, we're going to be talking about the disruption of technology in the various aspects of you know, Nigeria's living in our economy, uh, health, healthcare and security, and basically everything. But let me first start with the first question. Mm -hmm. Where are we right now in terms of tech in the global space? Nigeria, where are we? I want to ask that first question. <laughs> okay, um, great question. So I've never seen um, a wider disruption in tech and a more widespread adoption of tech than mm -hmm. after COVID. So COVID changed the way of life, right? Mm -hmm. So we realized that suddenly things we didn't know were possible became possible, mm -hmm. right? So um, businesses started realizing that, oh, our workers can actually work from home, mm -hmm. right? So, and uh, thanks to Zoom, thanks to Meet, thanks to Skype, mm -hmm. you realize I can collaborate with people halfway around the world, you know, without having to be physically with them. So um, basically, borders are being brought down. Businesses realize that they can have customers beyond their geographical location, mm -hmm. right? Um, so basically, we've just realized that tech has really disrupted our way of life, even in healthcare, for instance. I mean, it's COVID, so we realize that people um, is having telemedicine, mm -hmm. right? So you can actually book for appointments, medical, medical appointments without mm -hmm. having to go to the hospital. You have electronic medical records where you as a patient have the power in your hands to store your own medical information. Because what you realized before is that when you go to a hospital, um, the hospital holds your information. But you go to another hospital and then that information is lost. You have to start all over again from the other hospital. But now technology has made it possible that you as a patient, you have the technology in your hands, you have the information in your hands, and no matter where you go, you take your information with you, making it possible for doctors to give better diagnosis. Okay. Right. So um, in different industries, we just realized that technology has really changed the way we do things. Mm. So let's talk about security now. A lot, like you said, you have access to all of these things in your hands, and the, 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 the web is a white space where everyone act, has access to. But where are we in that um, security um, as, as related to tech? Because still, a lot of things still go wrong. Um, I have to say that I think when it comes to security, that's probably where we still have a long way to go mm. to develop when it comes to tech, right? Because, I mean, you've been, you've been hearing the news, seeing what's going on and all that in the um, security, from a security perspective. Um, we have a long way to go, yes. And I believe that um, introduction of um, the national identity number, MIN, mm -hmm. you know, and other, th other initiatives that the government is taking are providing a good foundation for us to build proper technology to handle security issues. But we're not yet there. We're still at the um, level of building foundations. Mm. At some point, we need solutions that would enable governments to be able to identify people by their faces. So, yeah. you know, maybe somebody takes a, a picture of somebody committing a crime, you know, you can easily just do face match. You understand? Mm -hmm. So match a person's face against your database and start identifying criminals. You know, you can take their fingerprints and be able to trace criminals across borders. Yeah. So I believe that we still have a long way to go to be able to use biometric matching, face matching, fingerprint matching to apprehend criminals and just ensure that we can track them as they go. Mm -hmm. But um, we're getting there, right? We're not yet there. But I believe that at least with the current initiatives that the government is bringing on board, that gets us started on the road okay. to that. Uh, I need to emphasize that because, of course, there's current crisis going on in different parts, banditry and kidnapping and killing and all of that. So how can we best use tech, especially with the Boko Haram? And they will say, oh, they need their one location. Ordinary, simple profile mapping, they can't do. That's what they do abroad. When they have these kind of issues, they already can tell where these people are. So what are, what are the issues, what are things that can be done to ensure that crime rates are reduced, these things are reduced through technology? So I typically like to say that there's no big red button mm. you press to solve mm -hmm. this problem, right? you have to tackle the problem from multiple perspectives. Yeah. The very first way you have to tackle the problem is ensure every single person, every single citizen in Nigeria can be identified. Mm. Who are you? What are your details? What do you do? Which is what um, NIMS is trying to do by uh, you know, building a database of citizens. I think we can't jump that step. It's okay. very important, right? And then once you have that database, you can then start bringing other um, initiatives on, on top of that foundation. You know? um, for instance, you can, you can then ensure that, um, look at uh, SIM registration, for instance, right? With SIM registration being linked to your name, we know exactly, because what, what these kidnappers do? They typically buy a SIM, mm -hmm. they call you, and then they destroy the SIM. And yeah. you don't know who bought the SIM, you don't know their details. So when th that loophole is closed by ensuring that the SIM belongs to somebody you can identify, you try to you reduce 
the loopholes, right? You reduce the ways that they can actually commit their crimes. Mm. So having that identity is very important. Um, blocking the same registration loophole is very important by ensuring that everybody that owns the same has an identity we can verify. And once you have those two in place, then you can now have, you know, um, yeah, solutions. Things. Maybe the police, imagine if um, every police station is equipped with a solution that helps them identify you. Mm. So you come to the police station and they say, oh, this, this person did this. You put your fingerprint and you see that, ah, you this same person. You committed this other crime in this yeah. other state. Mm -hmm. You know, this That's is something else you've database. done. Yeah. So with that database, you can basically um, ensure that um, you can apprehend criminals and you can basically track their activities. Okay. You know, mm. and, that's, and that's something that we still really lack. We lack a proper database. Because even some people are afraid of filling in forms because uh, they are afraid of fraudulent activities using their own data. And let's talk about, talking about communication. I know you said, you, let's reiterate a bit, you, you mentioned it's um, been more useful now in the workplace and tech has helped you know communication in the workplace tremendously that's yeah. the truth yeah. um post covid but it has also it has its downsides like tech has also ruined communication between the one and one person a personal relationship with your colleague your friend a tech has made it so much so that it's now hard to mm. have a conversation yeah you know because it's just the lol lma mm -hmm. you know short codes yeah. and all of that so how yeah. do we remedy this in communication space? Hmm. Interesting question. Well, the first thing is, I mean, just like you won't say because there's a chance, you know, you've heard about um, flight crashes that you won't fly anymore, mm -hmm. or that because yeah. the accident you won't go on a road trip anymore. Mm. So um, the advantages of tech are undeniable. We have to go with the modern technology. Yeah. But I think it's now left to each and every one of us, right, as parents, as colleagues, as friends, yeah. to ensure that we continue to drive those traditional cultures that we grew up with, you know, culture where face-to-face -face interaction was valued above um, yeah. phone interaction. I yeah. think it's just left to us individuals to value, mm -hmm. to actually drive that culture, consciously imbibe it ourselves, and then drive it into our children and to those, those around us, yeah. right? So I think it's an individual responsibility thing, okay. really. Uh, what can we do to just evolve to best practices, global practices, the way it's done in other countries? The standard of talking about index rates and tech rates. What are things that we can do to just evolve as Nigeria? Because with some of these businesses, I and mean, with the way private investors are, there's money coming in, but at the same time, there's still that, there's that gap. So how can we evolve? Yes, you're, you're very correct. And I mm -hmm. think um, government still has a lot of role to play here, right? Because when you look at um, more advanced countries, um, if you look at the involvement of technology in more advanced countries, it's a synergy between government and private bodies, yeah. mm. right? Take your smartphone, for instance. What makes your phone smart? It's smart because you can access the internet. You know, you have a touch screen, you know. All this, this internet I mentioned and the touch screen, even your GPS, uh, technologies that were powered or funded by the U.S. government, mm. military yeah. specifically. So those things started as U.S. military research projects, right? before they grew into what they grew into, and then private companies were able to take advantage right. of them yeah. and then give you a smartphone. So it tells you the role that the government has to play and then the role that the private citizens have to play. So leave the actual technology to private citizens, but create an enabling environment. For instance, STEM is not a very popular, by STEM I mean yeah. science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay. It's not a very popular um, course that people want to um, take right now in Nigeria. Incentivize students to go for STEM courses, right? Mm -hmm. Give them scholarships to go for STEM courses. Um, power R&D, you know, give companies tax, tax breaks and research grants and other incentives to put their monies into R&D. I just think we need to, uh, governments do their part in creating that infrastructure mm -hmm. and enabling an environment mm -hmm. for private companies to bloom and to be able to do their own business. So they would do the rest once the infrastructure and the um, enabling environment is there. So who has helped so far between the government and the private sector, in your own opinion? Like I said, in my opinion, it's a synergy. You can't really take one out of the equation, mm. right? Um, if you take government out, then mm -hmm. the foundation upon which the private companies built on will not be there. Yeah. But if you take the companies out, government alone does not have the capacity to drive mm. these in innovations that we're talking about. So it's a synergy, really. Okay. How can we encourage more young people to go into STEM? into tech space, more, more women. <laughs> I always have to <laughs> include that part. What can we do? It's a collective effort between the government and the citizens. Because if we have more people, more ideas, mm. that's the way the economy will grow. So how can we you know, evolve to that level? Yeah, um, part of what I mentioned earlier about um, giving scholarships, for instance. Okay. So if, as a student, maybe I just finished my SS3 and I'm looking to study and I realize that, oh, I can get a full scholarship if I go study computer engineering 
in these universities. Mm. Of course, you get more interest in, in those courses. So I think on the immediate, at least for the university, for the federal universities, governments can actually you know, incentivize this by giving scholarships to students. And also beyond that, governments can also equip those universities mm. to have better um, R&D facilities, right? So if I go to school and I come in, I'm coming out equipped for the workplace, you know, um, because if you look at uh, more advanced countries, their universities are core to their yeah. innovation because you realize that you hear about MIT, mm -hmm. Harvard, those universities mm -hmm. are the ones driving innovation. So we need to get to the point where our universities in Nigeria driving are driving our innovation. <laughs> I right. just have to laugh about that. But hopefully, <laughs> we'll do you have any No, because enough students don't really want to do anything tech or computer I, engineering or even no, IT but, but that trend or stuff. Is changing. That trend mm -hmm. is changing. Yes, because now I think a lot of people are no, noticing that the technology space is now the money making exactly. space. Not yes. necessarily because it's going to move tech forward. It's, it's a start. It's just because of the money. <laughs> it's a start. Well, right? it's we a start. hope so. so but I, go ahead. And even with our our laboratories in universities, they're still teaching Asian things. So there's a whole lot of overhauling that needs yes, to be done. Yes, the curriculum needs to be overhauled, you know. Um, but like I said, let's, let's even start. And, and mm -hmm. I think another thing is, you know, also making Nigeria a... Th there are lots of other factors here that can yeah, go into economy definitely. and all that. Because definitely. when you look at other countries, they also grew by knowledge transference. So mm -hmm. other people that have already done it come into your country yeah. and then they're transferring the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But um, we're a bit constrained from that perspective because, you know, our economic situation in Nigeria is not very appealing to foreigners, right? So doing our part also to ensure that the economy is growing, security issues are handled, would encourage foreign companies to come in and then that knowledge transference would basically also really help a lot of this um, universities and even individuals to grow. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up, I just wanted to know, um, and I know a lot of people will be... Um, inquisitive about this should you share could you share some highlights on some kind of apps or that um, every business owner at least let's give something to the business owners watching this should own at least or have on their phones and their smartphones hmm. well i guess it also depends on on the business but you realize that every business owner first at least in this day and age you want to identify who is working with you? Who are you? What's mm -hmm. your name? Mm -hmm. What are your details? You want to identify them, right? For instance, we at Simpix have built an app where every business owner can verify the identity of their employees, mm -hmm. right? So for me, that kind of app is a no-brainer. Every business owner should have it because you need to know exactly who you are bringing on board, right? Okay. Um, then when you go beyond that, then you talk about um, apps like um, maybe Instagram. Because why do I say Instagram or Twitter? Why do I say, why do I mention these two in particular? Technology has created a foundation for social media, the rise mm -hmm. of social media. Mm -hmm. And earlier I mentioned that technology has brought down barriers, right, um, when it comes to the customers of businesses. So you don't have, your customers should not be limited to Nigeria. You can have customers even across the world. How do you get to them? You get to them through social media, right? So you need to be social media savvy mm -hmm. in this day and okay. age as a business owner. So I think those apps basically would uh, uh, they're a no-brainer for a business mm -hmm. owner that would want to break down barriers and get customers beyond their immediate geographical space. All right, Annie, thank you so much. You said thank a lot you. because apparently we didn't even mention your, your expertise is in product and people, programs management, people management. This is a lot. Uh, <laughs> of course, you're, you're also into des desktop and web development. That's tech space. You really, how long have you been in the tech space? 12 years. 12 years. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, before we wrap up, women, how have you been able to encourage women? in that tech space, because there are not too many women who are going into this space. Yes, um, when I first started working, mm -hmm. for instance, I think I was the only lady in the midst of about 10 guys. So wow. I saw firsthand, you know, mm -hmm. and even till now, the ratio is still out of balance. Mm -hmm. But um, on, our, on my part, and even on part of my company, we've been, we are deliberate about hiring women. Okay. So not just hiring, we're not expecting you to already be experienced. We're mm -hmm. deliberate about hiring you and training you oh, wow. in tech, right? Yeah. So. I'm very passionate about women in tech. I'm very mm -hmm. passionate about trying to bring up other ladies like I have been brought up in tech. So, okay. you know, I give opportunities to ladies, even if you don't know, as long as you're passionate and, and you're willing to work. learn. Right. Um, you mm. come in and we, and we get you trained. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. I mean, it was nice really talking to you to really get your mind on the present position of tech and how we can leverage tech and how yeah. we can grow as a nation and as an economy. Thank you so much, uh, Olamide Aja, for coming on the show. So Thank I'm going me. further on the conversation. It's, it's um, workout, and a lot of people are not really good with workouts. Some people struggle with workouts. Some women feel, well, let me just be my body in peace. <laughs> I don't need to work out. So if you want to have that body goals, we're going to be talking to uh, tech expert Elizabeth Oyema on how to get your body bouncing and how to be popping, you know.
with tech, with workouts, sorry. So we'll be right back. We'll take this break and we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere.